It's a good thing I have a real job. Yeah. And by relatively modest amount of money, that basically means you have to buy a copy of Rolling Stone to get the address from the back. And then you need a stamp in an envelope that I think they send you a, a reply. Oh look, it's it's time for the TV show. Hang on, let me get a let me get a swig of the brain juice. <laughs> I'm really not allowed to drink soft drinks except on the show because they're full of sugar and bad for me. And this one is actually full of real sugar, so I think it's extra bad for me because I don't remember why. It's something about corn syrup being God's miracle liquid. And sugar, since it comes from Cuba, is the the sweetener of the oppressors. I should have paid attention in civics. Um, welcome to Keith Explains. Uh, it's another month for me, uh, February 2012. So uh, pretty much I got 10 months to get the last 18 months worth of TV shows edited <laughs> and up before the end of the world. Uh, it's a race. It's really a race now to see whether the world can end before this TV show does. Uh, Anyway, I got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. I only have two pieces of paper, but I have more pieces of paper. I just didn't bother to write crap on them because I'm not even going to get through two pieces of paper. And I'm saving trees. Tiny, white, paper. I don't know why trees are brown, but paper's white. It always confused me. Um, but it probably involves chemicals. Anyway, first thing I want to talk about. Uh, Sharpies. Uh, I, I've used Sharpies before. You'll notice I always wrote my notes with a Sharpie. And people are like, Keith, why do you write your notes with a Sharpie? And I'm like, well, it's so I can see them. And they're like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. And I'm like, well, see, regular pens are very thin. And then, then you, when you're looking at them fast and you're trying to remember your notes and stuff, uh, anyway, I use a Sharpie. And I've used a Sharpie on the show for years. And it never occurred to me that I could, I could be using Sharpies for my own benefit. But like, like a year ago, I mentioned Sharpies on the show. And then the Sharpies people mailed me. And they were like, hey, Keith, thanks for using a Sharpie on the show. Here's a new Sharpie for you. So now I'm $3 ahead, right? <laughs> right? Because see, look, look, a real letter, OK? You couldn't get this unless Sharpies people had actually mailed you. See, even the top, it says the Sharpie people. That's how I know it's from them and not from one of my friends who's punking me. <laughs> Although I do want to let any of my friends know out there who might be watching this that I did have this piece of paper dusted for fingerprints. <laughs> and I have been picking up the glasses at Monday night dinner for the last month or two and dusting them for <laughs> fingerprints. So it's entirely probable that I know the exact person who's punking me with this fake letter from the Sharpie people who were like, hey, we noticed you used a Sharpie, and you talked about how you get Sharpie markers on you when you're waving it around. And look, we invented a, a Sharpie with a clicker. And look, it's a clicker Sharpie. See, you don't, there's no cap to take off. You just click the end, and look, Sharpie comes out, and then you can draw on crap. I'm not going to draw on this, because technically it's evidence. <laughs> evidence. OK, watch. Here, I, I can draw on this. See, watch. Clicky outy. Draw. Clicky inny. Nothing, nothing. Evidence. I'm being punked right now. I'm being punked. I'm, I'm keep waiting for Ashton Kutcher to jump out. And I'm like, he's not going to jump out. He's busy with something. It ain't me. But that said, that brings up a bigger point. Uh, as you know, Access TV is not as lucrative of a profession as it used to be. A lot of people say, Keith, how much do you make from doing this show? And I'm like, nothing. I make this show, I, I make negative money every time I do this show because I have to pay. And some of my friends, they, they get other people to pay for their show. And I'm like, that's, that's not fair. That's like, you're coming out even. And I'm like, well, I don't want to pay. And I'm like, well, you're, you're supposed to pay. It's penance. It's, it's like Catholic guilt, but it involves an actual check. I mean, there's no pan they pass around, but it's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> like, no, I have, I have producers. And I'm like, you're not producers. You have people you've conned into paying for you to do your show. 
They don't produce anything. Producers are people that are like, okay, we're going to make sure the camera's there and we'll <laughs> arrange for the food truck to come by and, and we'll have food for everyone. And we pulled in a permit. So we're sure we can film that. That's what producers do, right? They produce something. People that just write a check are technically investors. <laughs> or in Access TV, they're dumb people that are writing a check every month for money. I mean, I, I'm writing it, so I know it's dumb, right? I, there's, there's no... But, but to that end, right, like the Sharpie people, okay? Sharpie people, totally fake. We all know that. Uh, fingerprints. Say no more. Uh, civil suit is pending. Uh, I'm just waiting for the appropriate person to be served, which costs me money, right? It costs, it's freaking crazy how much money I'm having to spend to sue this person in court to make no money back. Uh, anyway, what it occurred to me is, while I'm not sure this whole Sharpie thing worked out, if I mention things on the show, then when I upload them to YouTube and YouTube does the automatic transcription... Those words will show up in the transcription pane. And then anyone that searches Google might find my show. So if I talk about things I actually want, maybe the people that actually make those things will, will find them in a Google search and then they'll send them to me. So specifically, like the Nissan Leaf. <laughs> I'm going to say Nissan Leaf. I want to be sure it's really clear so the automatic transcription stuff gets it. Uh, the Nissan Leaf, I am told, would be a great car. Now, I don't know if it's a great car uh, because I don't have one, uh, because I haven't paid for one. But if, if someone were to mail me one, say, in a, in a box, in a very large, it'd probably be more of a shipping container at that size, but if, if I were to arrive at home and there were a thing, well, it won't be my doorstep because my doorstep is tiny. If there were a thing in my driveway and it had one of them big red bows on it, and yes, I know the red bow is a trademark of Lexus. I'd be okay with the Lexus too. Lexus. L-E-X-U-S. Lexus car. That would also be okay. Uh, anyway, any expensive car, really. Uh, I don't want, like, a used car. That would be terrible. Uh, or, like, if I were to get home and find that someone who had a car that broke down had just told AAA to tow it to my house and leave it in the driveway <laughs> with, like, a bow on the top, that would, that would not be good. So don't do that. Because you can get fingerprints off cars, too, is my point. Uh, I, anyway, Nissan Leaf. If the nice Nissan Leaf people were to somehow give me a car tax-free of course so you'd have to you'd have to bump it up to cover the taxes i would pay because you gave me a free car although we were talking about this before the show technically if i'm a religion it could be a contribution uh so i'm gonna look into that and if i'm thinking church of keith uh, good name. Uh, no one can spell it. Um, but I'll probably have to. I'll probably have to register Church of Keith on the way home tonight, just so that we're sure I have it. Uh, and then the Nissan Leaf people, or the Lexus people, or both. I don't want you to. If if you're a Lexus guy, I don't want you wondering. Well, I don't want to give Keith a car if the Nissan Leaf people beat me to it. I'm okay with that. Um, anyway. We'll figure this whole tax thing out. Just let me, just give me a day or two and we'll have gotten that part resolved. Um, so I think we got the car handled. Um, real estate is trickier, uh, but always appreciated. Uh, it's good if it's downtown. Uh, it's good if it's downtown, not in the snow belt, because I've lived downtown in the snow belt and I don't want that real estate. It's miserable. It's freaking cold. And the sidewalk is covered with ice, and everyone's moving out to where it's warm and not covered with ice. I suppose I would be okay with, with a large city block in downtown Chicago. I'd, <laughs> I'd buck up and, and accept it in a grateful way. I think grateful, I think for many things I can promise you grateful. Uh, what else? Um, I'm not against islands. 
Uh, I prefer that they have non-totalitarian governments. Uh, but truthfully, if the island's big enough, or if you're going to give it to me, and I have been playing a lot of Tropico 3, so I think I would be a good island ruler if by good <laughs> island ruler you're willing to accept someone who, who rules dictatorially and builds roads to stupid places in the island. <laughs> Because I really like how the road tool kind of works. <laughs> and I'm like, click. And then you just like click somewhere else. And then it'll place this long winding road. And I'm like, that didn't make a bit of sense. And then I'll do it again. Like in real life, if you were building a city, you would not be like, minions, construct me a road from there to there. And then go away for a week and a half. And then come back. And like the road would be all winding. You'd be like, Oh, you silly minions. Build it again. No, right? You'd, you'd clarify where you want the road to go. You wouldn't get these crazy ones. But if I were your dictator, which, again, I'm willing to do, uh, I think I would offer you free reign in road placement, provided I was unimpeachably your presidente. Uh, also, I can't speak Spanish. So you're going to have to meet me halfway. Um, I guess pretty much that's it. There are lots of other sponsors. If you have some kind of high-value thing you would like to give me uh, entirely cost-free to me, which I will probably never mention on the show, uh, or mention you in my real life at all, send it away. I'm not hard to find. I'm on the Google. Uh Next on my list, Loretta said, you, you could talk about cop shows. And I'm like, yes, I could. Because <laughs> oh if you're at my house, and specifically if you're at my house and you're looking at my DVR, you're like, man, do you tape a lot of stupid cop shows. <laughs> and by cop shows, I don't mean like Law and Order, like with a dunk dunk. No, I mean like actual cops or like uh, Campus PD. Uh, or uh, jail. I tape the jail show. And I tape, I don't really tape them, right? But like every Saturday and Sunday, MSNBC turns from we're going to talk about news to we're going to talk about prison. And I've never quite figured out what programmer thought these two would be consistent. Like he's like, well, people that love to hear about news during the week, maybe they would like to see prison on the weekends. <laughs> And not just a little prison, right? Like, if you're watching news during the day, right, there's an hour of host X, and then an hour of a different host, and an hour of a third host. But on the weekends, it's just straight prison. It's just like, you're in jail, you're getting out on Monday, and prison, prison, prison. I don't get it. but it, So I end up watching those, because I'm really too lazy to find the remote. So if I've left the television on MSNBC on Friday... All Saturday afternoon when I'm sitting in the computer room, it'll be talking about prison. I know more about being in prison than many prisoners, I think. I, I've actually thought I could plausibly go to prison and survive for about two or three days <laughs> before I made what would in the prison diary be described as the incident. Uh, after which I would no longer be in prison. Uh, I would have been formally imprisoned. Um, anyway, so I watch all these cops. I, I don't even know why I watch them, right? Like, I'm watching a cop show, and I'm like, man, I'm wasting my time watching this. But it's... You can tell the cop shows that they've gone in with a purpose, like, like, like the original, like the cops on Fox, right? They're like, we want to show cops... But we don't want to show, like, when the cop walks up and just kicks the guy for no reason, right? We only show cases where it is morally, unambiguously the case that the bad guy is the bad guy and the cop is the good guy. Uh, and I'm assuming that's because they have to get the police people to cooperate with them. And so they're like, we're not going to show you looking like complete idiots. Uh, like, I'm... If you watch the cop show, people that take off on a high-speed chase never get away. Whereas I read the paper and I'm like, they get away all the time. Because cops are like, yeah, there was this guy and we saw him going fast. And 
I did a U-turn and I tried to catch up to him, but I couldn't. You're like, you never see that on cops. Why? Because they never, it, it's just like the comic code from the 50s, right? Where evil could never go unpunished. And I think it's largely the same thing on cop shows, except on cop shows, it's not so much evil as stupid. Like most of the people you see here, just they're, they're just stupid, right? First of all, two thirds of them are drunk. <laughs> and and I speak with experience. When you're really drunk, you're pretty stupid. <laughs> uh, and if you can be really drunk and not be stupid, you should apply for like a MacArthur Fellowship. Because <laughs> what that means is when you are not drunk, you're a genius. Okay? Because. Everyone goes down a ways, right? So I'm, I'm moderately smart, and I slide down, if I was kind of inebriated, which I'm not that often, right? I slide down to almost stupid. <laughs> and, and there are a lot of people on these cop shows that I think started stupid. Sober. <laughs> and then they just go down from there. Um, and I've watched, I, I don't know how, I mean, Right, there's a show called Campus PD, and it's, it's not regular cops, it's cops at colleges. <laughs> and they're arresting college students. And you're like, college, that's, smart people go to college, that's the whole point of college, right? I mean, they don't let stupid people into college. No, smart people apparently do not go to college, because you watch, the, Campus PD is all, let's go arrest drunken college students. You're like... If you're, I have a nephew, and he's in college, and I'm like, I really just want to sit him down for a campus PD marathon of like four or five hours. I'm like, okay, five hours from now, you're going to know all the stupid things you shouldn't do, and then you can graduate from college. Really, that's, just, watch, she's clearly so drunk she can't stand up. But she keeps insisting she had one beer. For God's sakes, don't tell a cop you had one beer, okay? If you tell a cop, I had one beer, they just take you to jail. You know, you're like, how many beers did you have? And you'd be like, I think I'm having a stroke. <laughs> okay? Because if you say that, they got to call an ambulance. Okay? And then just, for God's sakes, just study up on stroke symptoms. Just make your left side... Twitch some, right? Okay? And the cops will be like, I'm pretty sure he's really drunk, but he is twitching on one side. And I would hate to be the cop that that took the stroke patient to jail. That look that would look bad in the paper. So perhaps I had better call an ambulance and have this probably lying to me, but potential stroke victim taken to the hospital to be examined. And then once you get to the hospital, just vibrate some on the left side and then fall over. And then what they'll do is they'll put you in a nice hospital room overnight. And then in the morning, you can be like, I don't know what happened. Someone must have put something in my 7-Up. And that's 7-Up. Don't say 7-Up because that's clear. You should have noticed it. Someone must have put something in my Coke. Yeah. Ginger ale. Ginger ale's clear. What's that? Ginger ale. Ginger ale. <sighs> Lately, they've been coming up with even newer cop shows. Uh, right? Originally, it was just the cops. Uh, and like I said, cops, it's in like the 50th year. I don't know how long it's been. Uh, but but it's, it's really, it's the same half hour over and over. <laughs> Except the accents, right? It's just... It's just people being arrested for the same thing with different dialects. Uh, and I mentioned the campus. And then there's a jail show. There's a, like, jail is like before prison, and most of the people go to jail and then get out and pay fines. Whereas in prison, they're like, well, we're here for eight years, so we really, there's no rush. <laughs> uh, lately, like, but now they've, they've had to branch out because people have seen all the potential plots, right? You can only film so many car chases. Lately, they have things like they have uh, Alaska cops. They're not cops. They're like Alaska troopers or something. And they're up in Alaska. And they're like, oh, there are only 40 police officers in all of Alaska. And I'm like, really? And they're like, no, there's 400. But still, Alaska's <laughs> huge. Like, this guy's 
territory is 7,000 square miles. And I'm like, there's a lot of crime in that guy's territory that he never manages to catch. Because, like, he can get a call, like, burglary in blank. And he'll be like, well, let's hope the guy doesn't have more than an 18-hour lead on me. Because <laughs> it's going to take me that long to drive and fly there to look for him. Uh, but beyond that, like, I'm watching and they're like, they don't have the same kind of crime up there as we do down here. A lot of their crime seems to involve mooses. Because <laughs> I've seen the show, like, six times. And I think five of those shows involved, uh, we found a moose on the road. Or there was a guy that killed a moose that shouldn't have. And I'm like, oh. Like, or we're looking for a guy that maybe killed a moose that we don't think he should have. And then like half an hour, they're like, we couldn't find him. And I'm like, you were looking at Alaska. Have you seen a map? It's huge. It's full of moose, apparently. Uh, is the other thing I learned. And then the thing that Alaska cops realize me is, is right, so they, they're, they're, they're kind of nicer to people. Like, like in Philadelphia, the cops just hate everyone, near as I can tell, because I've seen the shows. And they're just like, no, we hate you. Just You're coming to jail. And up there, they're like, they're, they're nice. They're kind of flat. I'm like, here's a show, I'm thinking, Canada Cops. Okay? Because if they're kind of polite in Alaska... Right? Just imagine how great it might, like, yes, we're wondering, might you have stolen some money from the bank? <laughs> we did follow a car from a bank that had recently been robbed and it parked right in front of this house. And we asked next door. And <laughs> Mrs. Mildred said that she saw two men come in here with two large suitcases full of money. And we're wondering if you might have found them. Oh, no? Okay, well, thank you then. <laughs> okay? That, that, I'm assuming, would be the average Canada cops show. Uh, or, you know, we've... He's doing two miles an hour over the speed limit, and we've decided to pull him over for a good talking to. <laughs> Did you know you were doing two miles over the speed limit? And the guy in the car would be like, Miles, what are you talking about? It's Canada! <laughs> we measure speed in angstroms or something <laughs> i forget what uh cop shows Co uh, here's something else it's vaguely cop related uh sopa uh by the time this show is actually edited the world will have ended or, or this whole sopa thing will probably be over but sopa was this big thing where half the internet stopped working like a week and a half ago uh, i believe it's the stop online piracy act uh, and Congress was like, we know how to stop piracy on the internet. We're just going to shut down the internet. And that'll fix them. I'm like, silly Congress. Uh, and then I had my brilliant idea, which is, maybe we haven't asked nicely. So here we go. This is the Key Statenfield uh, how to stop piracy on the internet solution. If you are out there, Please stop pirating things on the internet. You're only making it bad for everyone. And if you keep it up, they're going to take the internet away. <laughs> so, cut it out. <laughs> okay? Uh, uh, after this is done, I'm going to call Senator Feinstein and Senator's boxer. Uh, I'll send him a link to the show. Uh, I think if we can just get this played once or twice on TV, maybe like during the Super Bowl... I could buy an ad. Well, I could buy part of an ad. <laughs> buy a very tiny, tiny part of an ad. Uh, we can solve this whole thing, and we don't need any crazy legislation. Uh, you may have noticed that while the whole internet was down, Wikipedia was down. Uh, which people were like, what did you think about that? And I'm like, well, the morning of Wikipedia being down, I tweeted... For once, Wikipedia is not wrong about Mac OS 9. Because <laughs> I'm still bitter, Wikipedia. Just so you know. <sighs> anyway, those were all the things I was going to talk to before I got to the actual thing I was going to talk about tonight, which is glasses. 
Uh, and you at home don't know it, but I usually wear glasses. On the show, I wear contacts uh, because it's hard to light glasses. You get reflections, and so I put in contacts. It's my little, you know, way of giving back to the people. Um, but I have to wear glasses. I had to wear glasses since fourth grade, and I probably should have worn glasses since third grade because apparently I did, or no, I had to wear them since fifth grade, but I probably should have worn them since fourth grade because I did really bad in fourth grade. And eventually they were like, oh, he can't see anything. Um, but lately, right, and I just wore glasses. They were fine. I got a pair of glasses. Uh, I picked them up at the optician, and I took them off a year later, really, because uh, I wore them to bed and everything. I wore them in the shower. Like, I, I never didn't have my glasses on. The only time I didn't have my glasses on, it was because I was cleaning them, and everything was fuzzy then. Um, but lately, like, when I go to the optician... She's like, oh, your vision is changing again. And I'm like, yeah, things are a little fuzzy. Here's the thing. Getting old sucks. <laughs> um, used to be I could focus on things really close and things pretty far away. And with glasses, I was great. Now, even with glasses, I can't see anything closer than about here. Uh, and with these new glasses, I, I just got this new prescription. And... And she's like, well, your eyes changed a little, so I had, to, I had to tweak them. And I got this new pair of glasses, and I put them on, and I'm like. Okay, you want to know why old people are angry? It's because of this, okay? It's because the world is failing us. It's because the things we want to see we have to keep holding in an ever-narrowing area, right? I can see a city block down to about four feet away. And next year, okay? <laughs> Here's the other thing. I don't have much time left. Uh, like, they're giving me the exam. And she's like, all right, is this better than this, right? She's going back and forth. They never explain what better is. Okay? I could be doing this totally wrong, right? Like, to me, better is, well, yeah, it's a little better. But I mean, what if better meant sharper? Or what if better meant uh, this one has aesthetically more pleasing shape to the eye than the other one? Or what if better meant this one's not upside down? In which case, they're, they're both bad. I'm... <sighs> See, I, I'm not going to... Okay. I'm not even going to get to these last ones, so I'm, I'm going to put them in the wiki for next time. Uh, thank you all for watching the show. Uh, it's been great. Well, it hasn't been great, but it's been okay. I mean, okay, all I'm saying is the person responsible for this will pay in a very legal sense. See you next time, everyone. See, I didn't get the, I didn't get the fact of cut cards. I didn't get it. I did explain the Sharpie. Okay, I got there. Okay, now, see, now I have the clickable Sharpie. I'm ready to sign boobs. Okay, yeah, yeah, I knew that wasn't going to happen. Now I got the factor crap cards. Earlier, we had an act.